Hello there, I'm Pastor Craig, and here we are on week two, day eight of our two-week focused prayer on being a disciple who makes disciples. Uh, so I hope that uh, as you're engaging into this, that you're using the app, go to the website if you don't know how to get that app, or go to the Play Store or wherever else you get your apps, and go to Family Church DC for Douglas County. Uh, you can get that app loaded onto your phone, um, but you can also go to the website, uh, familychurchweb.com. And uh, Phil, you can look around there and find out where this uh, weekly kind of prayer focus is at. Uh, so today we're reading in Matthew, uh, Matthew 4, 18 to 22. Again, we're just taking snapshot pictures of oftentimes where Jesus is communicating or stories about people who've been impacted by the gospel, who've become disciples and are sharing the gospel to be disciple makers. And so uh, really, this is kind of that that famous story you'll hear as Jesus calls these fishermen, right, to come follow me and make fishers, make them fishers of men. And so here's his, the profession that they had. Um, Jesus used the, sort of the terminology to say, hey, you're, you're a great fisherman. Um, follow me and, and I'm going to give you a different occupation uh, similar to fishing, but I'm going to make you a fisher of men uh, where you're going to go out and we're going to work together and we're going to hopefully bring in, uh, like in a net, those uh, that, I am, that I am calling to, that I desire, that I want to see people come to faith. So um, that's what we're looking at in Matthew. And so one of the things that I think is important when we think of being a disciple maker is that uh, we are called into lots of professions. Many of you have been given great skills. Some of you as uh, doctors, some of you are mechanics, some of you, uh, you work in the food industry, and others of you are counselors. I mean, I could go through the whole list. I don't want to exclude anybody because every possible opportunity that God gives us to work with our hands or our minds are opportunities for us to use to advance the gospel and to advance the kingdom of God. And so um, oftentimes, I think we, we hold perhaps a higher esteem for a missionary overseas, and they're important, or a pastor in a local church, and they're important, or somebody who serves uh, in some capacity, a chaplain or something. But the fact is God has called them into a specific place um, that we use the term ministry, but we're all ministers of the gospel if we're followers of Jesus. We've been commanded, like we read way back on day one, to go and make disciples. So this is a calling on all of our lives as followers of Jesus. So in this process, um, God can use where you work to transform people uh, for his purpose. So uh, I just want to remind you that wherever you are, in fact, one of, uh, one of the beautiful things for, for those of you watching who aren't actively involved in a ministry position, um, you actually get to be engaging oftentimes with more people that aren't aware of the gospel than someone like myself. I, I find myself oftentimes, because of the nature of being a pastor, to be with people who are already followers or you know, someone who's brand new to church perhaps. And, and, and we do get people coming frequently that don't have any truth yet in their life, and those are great opportunities. But my natural work sphere, hopefully, is that everybody I work with is a follower of Jesus in my workplace. So it makes it difficult to go out there and say, today I'm gonna to share the gospel in the workplace. Not real effective if they've already heard everything and hopefully are disciple makers too, right? Doesn't mean that we all can't grow. It doesn't mean we can't help each other grow. But I'm referring specifically today to you and your workplace being a disciple maker wherever you work and wherever you play and wherever you go to school and learn or wherever that looks like and where you live. So um, today, first prayer focus again coming in, I'm gonna release you in just a moment is ask God to reveal areas in your life where he can use you for his purposes. So we're gonna go into prayer time. Again, we're, we're at every time we pray, I think it's important we acknowledge who God is. He is our Father. Uh, he, is, he is more than just a buddy we hang out with. He is the creator of all. So let's approach him uh, humbly and with reverence for him. But also, let's remember to give him thanks. Um, I just think, you know, Jesus models that when he, he goes through, uh, you know, many of you are familiar with the Lord's Prayer, but look at, look at the pattern, you know, acknowledge who, who God is, give him thanks, and then uh, present requests and go to him. So uh, I hope to, on day eight of this second week, 
you are being challenged. And really, I'm hope that uh, after a week, perhaps you've already had an opportunity to have a conversation with somebody who doesn't yet know Jesus or is really new to, to the understanding of who Jesus is. Uh, I hope that these prayer times are uh, not only developing you as, a, as more of a focused disciple, but are preparing you to share it with others. So um, have a great day and enjoy your prayer time.